being a Canadian citizen, um, growing up, hockey is definitely the sport of the country. Um, but I was fortunate and enough, I was fortunate enough to see guys like Vince Carter, uh, Chris Bosch, um, those type of players play in the Toronto Raptors organization. And, um, you know, from a young kid, I used to go to the Raptor ball camps and so forth. And uh, luckily enough for me, I was surrounded by a bunch of people who love basketball. So it was kind of ingrained and um, indebted into my uh, personality and DNA at a young age. And um, there's still basketball culture out in Canada, regardless of it being a country um, that supports hockey primarily. Speaking about my father, um, he definitely, he, he was an international kickboxer and uh, he competed at the highest level. He was a champion for many years. And uh, initially my first sport that I got involved in and uh, relatively was taken serious was boxing. Uh, it wasn't kick, kickboxing, but it was boxing. And, um, you know, over some time, I just slowly developed a serious love for basketball and it kind of took my focus away from basketball, uh, from boxing. And um, that's kind of how I steered my direction into this route. And um, my dad basically said to me, you want to box or you want to play basketball? And right then and there, I said basketball and I never looked back. Leaving home at 15 to pursue uh, being a basketball player full time was easily the hardest thing that I had to do in my life. Um, it's crazy because I'm not a, a huge emotional guy. You'll see my emotions on the court as far as passion and excitement, etc. cetera. Um, but the hardest thing for me is leaving home. Um, every time I leave home for a long period of time, it's tough. And uh, I think it's because it brings me back to those days and when I left. But, um, you know, I was having this conversation with my mother and father and that was easily the best decision of my life. So it's interesting to see how um, the greatest successes come through uh, the toughest times of uh, trials and tribulation. I have many, uh, many memories of, uh, you know, my friend Kevin Pangos, you know, he was kind of one of the, the big reasons as to why I committed here. Um, you know, having a conversation with Coach Messina and knowing that he was uh, on the cusp of uh, getting on board with us. He's somebody that I know has been at the epitome of basketball um, since I was a very young age. He's been as professional as they come since we were young, has always been a person of his craft, has always played at a higher level um, than any one of his peers. Um, and he's somebody who you just want to share the court with. He's somebody who is going to lead by example. Um, you know, and I'm thankful and fortunate enough now to call him a teammate again. We played together at a young age on Team Canada. Um, you know, so it's awesome that things come full circle. You know, being a freshman at Iowa State, I had a great, uh, great class that was a, 50, a group of fifth-year seniors who helped guide the way for myself to kind of see, you know, what it took to be successful. Um, Melvin Ejim, Chris Babb, uh, Tyrus McGee are some familiar names. Melvin Ejim and Tyrus McGee both played in the Italian League, but um, Will Clyburn in specific uh, is somebody who's kind of starring over here on this side of the world. And, you know, a, a lot of people are highly regarded on him as being an NBA player, but it's, uh, it's about playing and excelling at the place that you feel most comfortable at, where you're gonna be able to contribute the most. And these are things that I talk to Will about on a consistent basis. Um, he's a big, big role in, in uh, helping me make my decision to come over here last year. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm just so thankful to have guys like him in my corner and uh, I can't wait to, to see him on the other side of the court this year. You know, at Iowa State, I was fortunate enough to be in a lot of positions where um, you know, the ball was in my hands at, in big moments. And um, I think it's one of those situations where you can, uh, you can prepare as much as you can, being in the gym, kind of envisioning the, the, the moment of the clock going down and hitting the last shot, everybody does it. But um, until you're actually in those high pressure situations and taking those shots in games, I don't think there's any better way to prepare yourself. Um, so again, I'm thankful that I was in a lot of those high pressure situations. I missed some, I made some, um, but I do know in those moments, I'm, I'm relatively my most calm because I know it's, it's trusting the work, putting the shot up and uh, you know, all else there, you've done what you can. Considering my injury, um, my senior year when I had to sit out and then ultimately play my fifth year, um, I, th I think it can be something to consider in regards to you know, my draft stock. You know, they want young talent with potential, people who they can mold and, 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 and invest in as far as a project goes. Uh, with that being said, um, on my journey, I wouldn't change anything if I could. Um, because ultimately my fifth year was my best coll collegiate year um, personally and as far as individual goals uh, you know I had I had goals that I wanted to, to subside in regards to being able to do it with let's say a less talented squad it gave me the confidence to be the player that I was and it gave me the confidence to be the player that I am and uh, ultimately I'm, I'm in a position right now that I'm very blessed and very thankful for um, whether the draft could have went a different way or not I'm not sure, but who's to say that 
something wouldn't have something else wouldn't have happened you know so i'm just thankful to be here where i am right now uh, given the journey that i've been through um, in regards to my years in the nba um, i mean you can look at the stats themselves it, it's not one to where i was lucrative on the court um, i was somebody who was in a position where i had to be ready at all times given my name was called for injuries or uh, you know there was a time when covid was was very uh, high on the list of, of knocking players off and etc um, with that being said, it definitely gave me the confidence and belief that I was and am the player that I believe I am, given that I was playing against a bunch of guys, you know, behind the scenes in practice, um, you know, helping guys rehab, etc. And we were competing. It wasn't as if guys were coming in and taking things light because I'm not somebody who can just be walked over. I'm not somebody who wasn't working hard. Um, if slash when my name was called, I was ready. Um, and those moments taught me a lot about the game, taught me a lot about thinking the game of basketball, seeing it in a different perspective and light. And I think it gave me the sense of calmness and, prepar and preparation to come over here last year and have the year that I have, I've had. And uh, it also gave me the confidence to be in these shoes that I am now. You know, I was, again, blessed and fortunate enough for an organization like Brescia to take a chance on me and uh, put the ball in my hands and uh, allow me to operate and be the player that I am. Um, they also gave me tools around to help me be successful. Uh, with that being said, I am, I'm somebody who completely believes in uh, respecting the game. Um, and that means playing hard, that means playing with desire, that means playing with everything that you got in you. And uh, by no means will I ever disrespect the game. I'm gonna give everything I have on the court. Um, I'm not gonna disrespect my opponent, but I'm gonna compete. And I'm never gonna be somebody to back down. Um, that's not the way I was raised, that's not who, who I am as a man. And uh, you know, ultimately I was very thankful that Brescia allowed me to be the man that I am. And, uh, you know, I also found a new home here in uh, Milano. And, you know, I have complete confidence in Coach E and, and the organization for allowing me um, to be who I am as well. I feel like in today's world, um, you know, the game has been uh, migrating towards more of a positionless uh, game. With that being said, um, I take nothing away from pure point guards who completely pass, and I take nothing away from combo point guards who can score. And um, I think I'm in between of both. Um, I kind of just read the floor, read the room, and see what my team needs. If I, if I need to score, then I'm going to score. If I need to pass, I'm going to pass. But at the end of the day, I'm going to do whatever is necessary for my team to help us be the best that we can be. Um, I would say I'm more of a hybrid point guard, um, not necessarily your traditional point guard, um, but I take pride in playing the game the right way, and I just take what's given to me. You know, I, I appreciate the compliments first and foremost, uh, but with that being said, I'm somebody who kind of lives on the idea of being present. Um, Five years ago was five years ago. Uh, last year was last year. Yesterday was yesterday. And uh, I'm here now. Um, so every day I walk into the gym, every time I get an opportunity to put on uh, the uniform of the organization that I'm playing for, it's a new opportunity. And I have to prove um, not necessarily to the world, um, but to myself that I am who I believe I am by working hard and, and giving 110% every day. And I feel like once you do that, you commit to being a better you every day, everybody else will understand, um, you know, who you are as a person and as a player. You know, it's no secret that when you're playing in, in, in just the domestic league of whatever country you're in, you circle the games of the, the teams that are in the Euro League, that are in Euro Cup, because there's a, different, um, there's a difference in size and physicality in the way the game that's played. Um, but with that being said, it's nothing that I'm not used to. Um, I've seen size, I've seen physicality, and um, you know, it's just gonna be a new opportunity that's gonna take a little bit of adjustment, but um, I think the EuroLeague has, not I think, I know the EuroLeague has, um, you know, a crop of the best talent in the world. And it's not no coincidence, and it's because the players here know how to play. And it's just as simple as that. I believe that I can just be myself. Um, you know, I take pride in, in, in being an individual who can, um, you know, fit a, a certain type of mold on the team that's needed. Um, with that being said, I know um, when guys like to go right, I know when guys like to go left. When there's a guy that's hot and you know he's hot, you go to that person. I'm, I, I take pride in not being selfish. Um, we have great players across the board, and it's not even just the guards, it's the bigs. Um, we have guys who can get hot and go for 20 at any given night, and um, I could run down the list, but you know, I know the fans and the people out there are very familiar with the roster that we have. Uh, so with that being said, it's not about me. It's about us as an organization. It's about us striving for greatness. And when you put on this jersey, the Milano jersey, you're striving to be a champion. Um, you're expected to win. So whatever it takes to win, if that's needed for me to be aggressive and go score, if it's needed for me to pass, if it's needed for me to play defense, um, that's what I'm going to be.